Hey everybody, what's up? It's Edwin again, back with our IDW comic book review of the week. And what is one of the best IDW issues that are coming out right now? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Check it out, you guys. This is a really, really good read. There's a lot of good to this uh, storyline, and there's a little bit of bad, not a whole lot. But there are some bad that I'll kind of point out to it a little bit later. Um, Eastman, Karnal, and Walter are doing a really good job writing. Um, I'm very glad that Eastman is on board with this whole new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles storyline that's, that's been going on through IDW. Um, because he has, he's one of the original creators of TMNT, so there's more of a, uh, there's more of a passion and his heart is into it. He also helps out a little bit with the artwork that goes on in the pages of his book. Very good storyline. When we last left off, Casey Jones was actually gutted by the shredder with his knives on his hands. And real quick, you guys, I want to apologize if the sound quality isn't the greatest. I'm recording on my iPhone, and I'm using a crappy audio speaker with a built-in amplifier mic setup. So just bear with me, and I promise you guys, in the next couple of weeks, I'm actually going to have a Sony handheld camcorder with better video quality, better audio quality. So just bear with me a little bit longer. And I really appreciate it. Um, but what's going on is that in the last issue, as we saw, Casey was gutted. He was hospitalized. Leonardo was kidnapped. Well, this is definitely picks up immediately right out, right, um, right from, right off of that issue. Um, but they do a really good job illustrating and telling them the story through the uh, artwork because you see Casey being taken in the ambulance, while you also see Leonardo being taken in a van. You see Casey, be, Casey being hospitalized, being uh, rolling down a hospital on a gurney, and then you see Leonardo kind of being taken away and being captive and, and taken away to be put on a kind of like an kind of like an altar a little bit. So they do a really good job in the pages of this comic, showing these two characters parallel and just how identical and parallel this the, the, their their experience their their present experiences um are portraying so it's it's really good uh what happens is that casey being gutted was more or less like a decoy really just to distract the turtles from what shredder's real intentions were and his real intentions were to kidnap leonardo uh what happens is that while leonardo's up on this altar altar kitsun which is this uh this character right here on the cover she is actually responsible for the Shredder being immortal because the Shredder in the pages of IDW, he's actually immortal. He cannot die. And if you guys don't know how that happened, check out Secret Histories of the Foot Clan, the four-issue mini story arc that came out earlier this year. Very, very good. I give that a solid four and a half out of five Sharpies for that whole storyline. It's very, very good. Um, you actually find out how Shredder becomes immortal, and it's through the knowledge of Kitsune. Well, Kitsune, she's sort of this mystical, magical, Japanese uh, character. Um, I, I still haven't really found out what her agenda is in helping Shredder with all this evil and knowledge, but I'm pretty sure there's something behind it. But what she does is, while Leonardo is unconscious, is while he's lying down, on this altar, she uses her magic and manipulates Leonardo's history, his memories of his brothers, his relationship with Splinter, um, his knowledge of the Shredder. And what she does is she basically turns everything Leonardo knew into bad. And everything that Leonardo knew as bad into good. In a nutshell, Splinter and the Turtles end up being the enemy and Shredder ends up being the sensei or master through Kensu's manipulation. So I'm, I'm starting to see now what is going on with this story arc. Um, you also see a little bit into the character Angel, who is the other female character in the page of the comic. It's not just April O'Neil, which I think is a good idea because having just one chick, you know, you, you got to have a little bit more. You, you can just expound and expand on this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle universe 
when you have a variety of, of different characters and different genders instead of guys all the time. Uh, Angel, you actually see a little bit into her past and her relationship with Casey Jones, which is really nice. Um, because it, it brings forth more of a furthering of a development of this character, which everybody always wants to see. We don't always want characters just to be pawns or tokens and kind of playing the back the back story or being on the back burner of the major characters. Uh, Hobbs and Slash also show up in the pages of this comic book, and they have some very important information for the Turtles, but the Turtles are really skeptical and don't trust them for obvious reasons. But I'm not going to spoil it. Pick up this book. It's really, really good. I'm going to give this, this issue a solid 4 out of 5. Now, the bad part about this is that this type of storyline, we've seen it before in the pages of comics. It's not that original, but it's original to the TMNT universe. So, because of that, I give it a, a, a 4 out of 5. I recommend that people pick it up, check it out, uh, you know, formulate an opinion of your own. This is definitely worth picking up. Plus, the artwork by Matthew Santaluco is just really, really good. Um, he has he also has that cartoony look with the seriousness to his artwork and he obviously does a much better job than Eastman and Laird from back in the 80s uh, pick this book up you guys you definitely won't regret it uh, issue number one of the storyline is not that old you can still probably find that on your recent back issues at your comic book store uh, so yeah you guys don't forget to like comment subscribe uh, keep God first in your life Enjoy your comics, though, and God bless you guys. I'm out of here.